So I have a group of friends I've grown up with since I was starting from 11 years old, all through school at St. Bonaventure's, uh, the sixth form, uh, university, all through our 20s and even up until now. Uh, so there's seven of us in total, including me, and uh, for some reason over the years we became known as, as the boys. So, uh, you know, it was always like, you're going out with the boys tonight, you're doing this with the boys tonight. We're a very close-knit uh, band of brothers, and uh, it's, it's a beautiful thing to, to have in my life. Um, but there was a, a crisis moment, or at least a point where we all thought we were going to be disbanded, and that was around the time of university. We really believed that because we were going to different universities in different parts of the country, that this was it. We were going to go away, make new friends, and we wouldn't see each other again. So we were, we were quite sad. But there was something uh, that we needed to address before, uh, before uh, university began. And that was that two of our members, or two, two of our number of friends, uh, were twin brothers. And, uh, and they never spoke to one another. And we found that to be quite weird. And at first, you know, it was just a conversation between a couple of us. It's like, you notice that they never speak to one another. You know, someone should say something. So one or two of us would approach one or other of the brothers and say, you guys need to speak. I mean, they would speak, but it would only be to insult each other. So in that way, they were much like brothers. And, um, but it was a bit weird, but every time they'd be like, oh no, oh, oh. it would become very awkward and we'd move the conversation on. But we realised as among ourselves as friends that we needed to do something. So we called a committee meeting and decided what we were going to do. So a few nights before we were all setting off for university, uh, we gathered around one of the friends' houses and uh, we were playing FIFA, I think it was FIFA 98 back then on, on the PlayStation. And we stopped playing, we sat them down, we sat in a circle and said, look, your brothers, you need to start getting along or start talking. Because it would be so bad sometimes that if one of them wanted something from the other, uh, they'd ask an intermediary. So it'd be like, James, can you ask him for the remote control? And we said, your brothers, your twins, you know, uh, you need to, to get along. And again, it was very awkward. They were like, oh, no, no. And then and nothing came of it. It was quite, quite embarrassing, really, at the end of the evening. But there were stages in this conflict. First, we'd approach them one on one. Secondly, a small group of us had addressed the issue until the whole group were addressing the issue of these brothers not getting along. I have to say, it has an happy ending, because when they finally packed up to go to university, um, on the final moment, just before they were getting in the car to go, they broke down in tears, they embraced one another, and now they're the best of friends. So, in fact, so much so, they were best man at each other's weddings as well. So, because they're brothers, and it's nice to, to have that uh, in our group. Um, so, but I was thinking of that, and then thinking of the Gospel, on the subject of conflict and how we deal with, with behaviour which maybe is unhealthy, uh, perhaps uh, needs someone to say something. We've all been in that situation, you know, when you see someone who's behaving just a bit strangely or, or causing disruption, and you, so we, you know, we all say, well, someone's got to have a word with them, and then there's the awkwardness of making that approach. Jesus addresses it in today's Gospel. And what does he say? If your brothers are something wrong, go and have it out with him, alone. So rather than cause eruption and make a display, just lovingly go and chat to that person. If that doesn't work, then maybe bring two or three, because it helps to have the evidence of one or two witnesses to say, yes, I've seen that too, and I've seen this behaviour too. Because sometimes when you confront someone alone, they just say, well, that's just your problem. That's just you. And Jesus says, if that doesn't work, then bring in the whole community. So in other words, like we did with our friends, we brought in the whole community of friends to confront this issue. But really, what I want to talk about is what Jesus says next. So you've tried the one-on-one, -on -one, you've tried two and three, and then you've tried to bring in the whole family, the whole community, and none of it has worked. What do you do then? Well, then Jesus says something which, if we're not careful, can sound very, very harsh. Jesus says, if that doesn't work, if that person refuses to be helped, or refuses to follow your advice. Treat him like a pagan or a tax collector. Can you imagine a Pharisee at the time listening to that? He'd have gone, yeah, that's right. Because what it seems like Jesus is saying is, well, if you've tried one or two or three times, then kick him to the curb. But as with all things with Jesus which seem a bit weird or a bit mysterious in what he says, we always go to what he does to inform what he says. 
So if Jesus is saying, treat a person like a pagan and tax collector, we have to look at how he treated pagans and tax collectors. And how he treated them was completely different to how society did and Jewish society did at the time. Because in front of outsiders, pagans and non-believers, Jesus reached out and loved them. To tax collectors, the outcasts of society, those who put themselves on the fringes of the community, Jesus invited himself for supper round their house. He even called them to be his disciples. Matthew himself was a tax collector. In other words, what Jesus did when people were far away, he went the extra mile. He went out to find them in order to bring them in. Without any reprimand or teaching saying you're this or you're that or you've done this wrong, being a tax collector is wrong. Rather, he opened his arms and received them in and let them be in his presence by which they were transformed. That's what Jesus means when he says to us, treat them like a pagan and tax collector. Look at me, know my love, and then respond appropriately to that person. And I think that's very important for us as Christians to realise, because it's, very, it's difficult enough confronting people we love who we're close to when something's gone awry. It's very difficult to address conflict in our own personal lives. And often, when it comes to people who are far away from us, we can often be very judgmental and almost like casting off of people's views. You know when someone says something in the news or someone you don't know says something perhaps against your faith or that's wildly against your opinions, instead of actually reaching out to that person in love, what do we often do? What do I do? Kind of raise my head, roll my eyes, tuck and go, hmm, silly person. I push them out. Because they'll never know the truth if that's my attitude. But that's often the attitude we adopt. What does Jesus say? If someone wildly disagrees with you, if someone is even aggressive towards your faith or your way of life, how do you respond? What's going to bring them into that circle of God's love? It can only be a loving embrace. It can only be an extra effort to reach out to that person, not with teachings and not with proclamations, but with love and embrace and welcome. In the context of this parish, how does that affect us? Well, let's use that word again, evangelization, sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, of bringing people close to his love. Now, for us in here, for us who come to worship at the sacred liturgy, we're kind of like the in crowd in some sense. We kind of understand what's going up on here. We know the scriptures to a certain extent. We participate in these sacred mysteries. But it's not just us who need to know this. It's not just our well-kept secret. It's rather a message which needs to be shared with the whole world. How do we bring people into that circle of God's love? We open our doors. We don't judge. We don't correct. But rather we bring people in so that they may come close to the love of Christ too. In other words, we do as Jesus says and treat all people like pagans and tax collectors. We love them even more. It's what Jesus does in all of his ministry. It makes sense, for example, of other Gospels which seem ridiculous. You know, when he talks about the shepherd who abandons the 99 to go in search of the one, a normal shepherd wouldn't do that. A normal shepherd's thinking, I've got to sell 99 legs of lamb, I can sacrifice one. But Jesus says, no, the most important person is the one who does not yet know the love of God, the one who's not yet experience the love of God. Go in search of that person. Gently bring them to the home of the Father. And the thing is, if we adopt this attitude to our brothers and sisters, those whose opinions, whose views we don't know or disagree with, then it benefits us as a community and as a family. Kind of like a centrifugal force. You know, like those blenders which bring everything in to the centre. Because if we are concentrating our efforts on making more members of Christ's family, it makes us closer as brothers and sisters too. Think about, uh, go back to my friends, the boys. Now, had we adopted the attitude that said, well, we've tried our best, off you go. That group of friends would have been broken up. But in fact, by going the extra mile, by, for, by bringing brothers together to be reconciled, we all became closer as a group because we realised that we were all involved in this process of family building, that we were all sharers in the ministry 
of Christ. So my advice to you, as this is first of uh, three homilies on sharing the good news of Jesus Christ, is, is to do as Jesus told us to do. In your attitudes, in your daily lives, with strangers and those who don't yet know God, but particularly those who have strong opinions against him, treat them like pagans and tax collectors. Open your doors, the doors of your hearts. Make no judgments, just receive them in. Invite them into the love of God. Make a cup of tea for your neighbour, whoever they may be. Offer that outreach hand to the person who says, what, a Catholic? Why are you wearing that cross? Explain to them, it's because I love and because my Lord loves me. Starts a conversation. If we open the doors of our hearts, if we do as Jesus told us to do, treating our brothers like pagans and tax collectors, we bring people to Jesus and we grow our family of love. Amen. Amen.